It is Friday, January 1st. Let's talk PlayStation. Happy New Year's, everybody. It is officially 2021, and that means hopefully this will be a much better year than what we just went through. Ideally, it will be a much better year. I mean, it's, it's hard to be optimistic nowadays. You would think that it can't get much worse, but who knows at this point? Um, but we are off to a good start because it is Friday, and that means we get to talk some PlayStation here on this channel as we often like to do every single week. So let's start off as always with our PlayStation Plus reminder. The December games will only be available for four more days. Make sure you go ahead and download these games or add them to your library. On January 5th, it will move over. We know what those titles are and your PS4 benefits will be Greedfall and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Not bad, right? Uh, for PS5, you're getting Maneater, just the PS5 version. And this is the trend that we're now picking up on with what Sony's doing. So you're still getting two PS4 games. It hasn't changed for you if you're only on PS4 and on PS5, the benefit there is you are getting a PS5 game, but we are in this cross-gen period. So a lot of people are wondering why are they doing this with say Bugsnax and now Maneater where it's only the PS5 version. This is the PS5 benefit. I mean, there's not really a whole lot of PS5 exclusive games going around. So what they're doing here is just, okay, here's the PS5 version. It's only the PS5 version because obviously Maneater is available on PS4. If you buy it on PS4, there's a free PS5 upgrade. But if you're a Plus member on PS5, you get three three complete benefits. Um, and if you're on PS4 still, remember, you can claim these games. So you can claim Bugsnax, you can claim Maneater. By the time you get a PS5, these games will be there waiting for you. But um, that would explain why we are seeing situations like this. And also remember, in February, we are still expecting Destruction All-Stars, which will be more of a full-on PlayStation 5 ex exclusive title, which previously was supposed to be a game at launch $70 at retail. So I'm excited to see how that game actually pans out. But this month is very good, actually. I think this is a solid month for Plus. And, um, you know, to be honest, in recent months, uh, Plus has been uh, trending in a good direction. And that's a great segue to our next news story, which is that for Maneater, if you bought this game very recently on PlayStation 5, you actually were given a refund when you logged into your PS5. You probably already saw this. So what some users are reporting is that they bought it within the last few weeks, um, possibly upwards of a month. We don't know exactly how long it stretches back. But if you bought the game very recently, now that the game is announced for a plus benefit, you actually got refunded automatically from Sony's end. And this is awesome. This has always been a problem with plus and even games with gold where, um, you know, it always stings when you bought the featured title or one of the featured titles um, very recently within the past few days, weeks, even outwards of a month, right? It still stings a little bit to think that, ah, you know, if I just waited, I could have got it for free. Um, so this is a great, great step in the right direction, right? Because there's always... <laughs> There's always a lot of whining with Plus every single month, and you're not going to please everybody, of course, but this is one of the more consumer-friendly things that you can do to, you know, kind of side skirt some of these issues. Um, now, I'd like to see something for the fact that there's been a lot of crossover with Plus and PlayStation Now, um, which I think you can just solve that by consolidating the services eventually, uh, which I would imagine will happen at some point. But for right now, at least, this is good to see. It's only for Maneater. Um, I'm only seeing reports in the U.S. Not sure if this stretches mu stretches out much further than that. Um, and maybe this is only for PlayStation 5 benefits moving forward. Uh, so again, we don't have any other examples. But for right now, at least, I think this is awesome. I mean, you, you can't really go wrong with this. You can't really complain. Now, it is important to note here, um, some people are concerned that well, you may have received the refund, but now the game might be tied to a Plus membership when technically you already bought it as a, a straight out ownership license, right? Um, so people are concerned that the game is now getting tied to Plus to where you could let your Plus membership lapse and then you can't access the game that you got refunded for automatically, right? You didn't necessarily ask for that. Um, but as it stands right now, people that bought Maneater on PS5, they have the PS4 version. Their license shows that that's how they originally bought it. This is just a straight refund. They haven't changed your license or anything like that. So it's not tied to Plus. Um, you just got a refund and you can keep playing the game as is. If your Plus membership lapses, you can still play Maneater on PS5 and PS4. So all around, step in the right direction. Absolutely. Next up, we have a very interesting development in the PS5 customization realm, if you'd call it that. With PS5, we all know at this point, you can take the plates off very easily. It doesn't void your warranty. You can paint them, dip them. We're seeing a lot of really cool things with it, but you also have to run the risk of potentially damaging your plates. So we saw early on one company spring up called Plate Station 5 that would be offering, you know, colored plates themselves, which are more OEM style that snap on and off. Um, which seems like a good alternative and it seems natural almost to think that that would be a thing that would happen for PS5 But then we know what happened there. Sony applied some legal pressure. They changed their name to customize my plates 
more legal pressure from Sony and now they, they dropped that product altogether and I think now they only offer skins. And that kind of told us that, okay, maybe Sony's gonna be fighting these companies and we might not actually see third parties offer these plates. Uh, well, very recently, a well-established uh, brand in this area, D-Brand, they offer um, console skins, uh, phone skins, things like that. They just, you know, customize your electronics. They announced a matte black PlayStation 5 plate and not only have they announced this product, but they've even so much as gone out of their way to taunt Sony, I guess would be the best way to put it. <laughs> One of the first comments that they actually posted over on the Reddit was, or somebody had asked, are you guys worried about PlayStation taking this down? They said, we encourage them to try. And they've made other comments very directly saying like, look, you know, Sony come at us. <laughs> We're gonna be offering these things. We're confident that we can bring these to market. And what's so funny about this whole thing is that initially Deepran was going to be offering regular PS5 skins because that's what they do. And uh, previously they announced that they were actually canceling those skins because one, people weren't going to be able to apply them correctly. So they were very blunt about that. You're not going to put the thing on right. And then two, it just doesn't look good, which we've just recently tested that with a PS5 skin on my recent Amazon video. Yeah, it doesn't look good. There's just white's going to get exposed. There's no hard edges. So it's the console's problematic for skins, but... They said those were the reasons back then, but also that they were working on making these uh, matte black plates that'll be available in 2021, which there are currently some signups, so you can be notified when these become available, and uh, they do expect that most of these will go out of stock very quickly, but they say, the skills we've refined through the past few years of developing the grip case has uniquely positioned our organization to create OEM grade face plates, ones with all the precision, attention to detail, and needlessly elaborate packaging that you've come to expect from D-Brand. So at this point, what's going to happen here, because that one company got shut down very quickly, but they were a new company and that might explain why they were afraid of Sony's legal pressure. Whereas Dbrand is established, they've been around for nearly a decade. So they've probably done their due diligence to make sure that this thing is completely compliant. Like for example, not having a PlayStation cut out on their plate, um, not having PlayStation buttons in the center, which um, they've said something's gonna be there, but can't be buttons because those are, um, the PlayStation buttons are trademarked. So they've, they've probably done the research to know that this thing you know, is um, safe to bring the market without Sony getting angry with them or, or whatever. But that's what's so strange because we saw PS5, the plates come off. Oh, great. Once other companies get, you know, make a mold of this thing, you know, we'll have so many options, but that hasn't happened. Instead, we're having this conversation right here. And um, that's what's so bizarre because, you know, we've seen console shells made from other companies before. They're not really popular or they didn't really catch on because most people aren't comfortable with stripping down their consoles down to the motherboard. That's what you have to do, but with PS5, you don't. That's what's great. Um, so it's just strange that this is initially an issue, but I, I think, you know, this is something that Sony can't really fight in the long term once a lot of companies do start doing this. I mean, unless they really are going to be diligent with sending out cease and desist and legal action to every single manufacturer that does these, but once, you know, uh, a good mold from China shows up and it just starts, you know, it's just there's gonna be millions of these things at a certain point. Uh, for right now, at least, you've got an option from D brand and um, Matt Black. They said they want to do more, and uh, obviously, we, we still expect Sony to probably offer some sort of, um, you know, official plates from their end. And it'll be interesting to see what the pricing looks like from Sony whenever they decide to do something like this on, on their terms. Moving on, we got a recent report from Digitime citing industry sources that PS5 sold 3.4 million consoles in just four weeks. So one month on the market, 3.5 million consoles, or 3.4 million, excuse me, worldwide. And that the company is also expecting to sell anywhere from 16 to 18 million by the end of 2021. So this is a rumor. They're just citing industry sources. We still don't have any sort of uh, direct numbers from Sony. We just have milestone numbers and you know estimates from certain territories like Spain, France, Japan. Um, I think the UK also we had a number getting thrown around, but I mean, we don't have anything uh, concrete just yet. Just that this is the most successful PlayStation, which inherently makes it the most successful console launch ever. So 3.4 million sounds about right. Um, because uh, again, PS4 did 4.2 million by the end of 2013, which it's about the same time frame of a month and a half on the market, right? So if, we, if we're looking at a month right now um, for 3.4 million and Sony has had plenty of replenishments um, up until this point, right? Which is now 2021. Um, now they haven't had a lot of replenishments, of course. Every time the console goes up, it's sold out right away. So, you know, but it, it seems realistic that they could ship another, you know, one point, six million or so i mean i expected the console to do five million 
um, for this year. My reasoning was always that I think they're gonna manufacture more of these things, have more ready versus PS4, and so they'll probably sell a little bit more. And at least our initial reports from Bloomberg, that sounded about true. Bloomberg had two or three reports where they said it was five to 10 million, whereas you know the, the second five million, basically they'd sell five million at, during the launch period. The other five million would be for the first quarter of 2021. So that seemed to make sense. Then the next report said that they upped manufacturing. Then the third report said that they scaled back manufacturing. But as of right now, at least, we already know that PlayStation 5 is the most successful console launch ever. So 3.4 million, uh, maybe it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's an impressive number. It's um, And remember, because now that we're hearing a, a number getting thrown around, so many people going, oh, how many of those went to bots and scalpers? As we've discussed here, it always sucks that there are bots and scalpers, but happens every single console launch. And the number that we initially saw when we discussed this, I think last week or the week before, was 60,000 were resold on eBay. That's like a drop in the bucket compared to 3.4 million, right? The vast majority of the consoles are getting sold to, to actual consumers. I know it sucks trying to buy a PS5, but remember, you're fighting other actual gamers that want to buy the console and play it just like you. Now, if we want some context here on that overall number of 16 to 18 million by 2021, PlayStation 4 sold about 18.5 million or shipped 18.5 million. So ship doesn't necessarily mean sold, but at some point they're going to get sold. Um, shipped 18.5 million by the end of 2014. So that would actually put PS5 around the same area, if not slightly under if the company's expecting possibly 16 million, unless this report is actually citing that it'll be an additional 16 to 18 million on top of the say 3.4 that they've already sold, which really at this point they probably are closer to say 5 million. Uh, either way, I mean, they've, they've clearly got a lot of demand and I think they could easily, well not easily, because it's, it's tough to manufacture a lot of these things. It's a logistics thing at this point, but however many they make, I think they're gonna get sold. Um, it's it's crazy how much demand there is for PlayStation 5 at this point. So there is no you know sort of artificial holding stock back or anything like that. The company wants to get PS5s out to you because they're they're not doing anybody, they're not doing the company any good sitting not being sold or anything like that. I mean, remember these things are losing money. They want the consoles to get in your hands so that you know revenue can start being generated uh, through other means through playstation plus now software uh, dlc microtransactions things like that so they want these consoles out there and it's just crazy to see how much demand that there really is for our next news story there was a recent court decision in brazil that ordered sony to unblock playstation 5 consoles that were completely banned not just psn ids but the console being flagged on sony's end more or less to where you can't log in online on any accounts, you can't connect to anything, you can't um, download content, play those games that might require an online check-in or, or what have you, right? Um, basically the console would be offline only. And um, this is uh, something that Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, I believe also to uh, a degree at many points throughout the years have done in a situation where somebody might have broken the terms of service. Um, as far to warrant a punishment like this, it doesn't seem to happen too frequently. Normally just the IDs will get punished uh, or banned completely and you have to make a new ID or something like that. But sometimes the, the consoles can get flagged and completely pushed off of the network like this. And so what the court is ordering um, is that Sony needs, needs to unblock these consoles. Uh, and one of their, their main reasoning is that, for example, if you were to you know, break the terms of service on Netflix, you don't get banned from your entire television, you just get banned from Netflix. So. This is something that Sony apparently needs to comply with or face potential fines. And uh, we don't have all the details here, of course. This might just apply to the digital edition PS5 because that's where the console could really be completely useless versus, say, a disc edition where you could just uh, play the games offline. But this could perhaps set a precedence. Uh, not sure if this will really mean much outside of Brazil or even in Brazil for that matter. From what I'm reading, uh, Sony can appeal it and also not even really comply to begin with. I mean, I think it should go without saying it, it would be, it would really suck to get the entire console banned to the degree that it can get banned. Like for example, on Steam, as far as I know, the worst punishment you can get is just, you can still play your games, you can still download your games, but you can't make new purchases and you can't play online, of course. Uh, so you still have access to your content. Whereas in this situation, when a console's flagged, I mean, you know, the thing's pretty much done. You can't log in anymore. And I think that also locks you out of TV and video services. I'm not entirely sure. But I mean, it's it's a far more severe punishment. And granted, I mean, some people could do really terrible things. 
like constantly making new IDs and you know cheating online and things like that which warrants say flagging the entire console but um, there still needs to be something in place to where you can still download and maybe even purchase new content but you just can't play online anymore from from that particular machine or, or, or what have you right so I think right now we'll just keep watching this and see if any developments uh, come out of this we'll, we'll keep watching this one Moving on to our next news story, we have another gold PlayStation 5 to go over, and this one's even crazier than the last one. If you remember, we went over one from the company Truly Exquisite, and uh, normally there's a few of these companies that will bling out electronics for a ridiculous price tag, and the one from Truly Exquisite was priced at about $9,000, which is no small sum of cash. They also sold DualSense controllers for, I think, $650. But uh, the one that's being offered here from Caviar, uh, I guess the amount of gold that they're using is just going to price this thing and potentially the several hundreds of thousands of dollars, which is absolutely nuts. That's pretty much the price of uh, some prime real estate in any any good location that you can think of. Um, but I mean, this is <laughs> this is nuts. It's crazy. And yeah, I mean, we we see this uh, you know every so often. These companies do this with tons of electronics. Um, but consoles, it's always so funny to think of. I always think about the, um, the, the original PlayStation 3 one, which that one was priced at like $300,000. And they only used, I think, product shots for, for that. I don't think there's any pictures of like the real thing, which, you know, I, you know me, I love the original PlayStation 3. I love the design of it. I love the glossy black. I love all that stuff. But I would love to see what that thing really looks like in the flesh, a gold PS3. Um, I think that would look... I mean, I wouldn't spend the money on it, but I think it would look amazing. Now, with all that out of the way, it's time to get to Let's Talk Plus, our weekly Let's Talk PlayStation giveaway where one of you can win a $10 PSN code. I would like to congratulate this viewer right here. I'll be contacting you very soon via email or Twitter. If you would like to win a $10 PSN code, it's very easy. Follow the link down below. Supporting this channel a number of ways can gain you an entry. And I'll announce the winner next week because I'm trying to pay for your games. Those are all the news stories that I want to talk about you all. This past week was still pretty slow for the most part. Not a whole lot going on, but I'm sure that'll ramp up very soon and we'll have more exciting stuff to go over. And uh, you may have also noticed I had no Tuesday video this past week. Took the time off to play some PS5. Earned a few trophies, maybe a platinum or two. I'll probably do a, an update video at some point, uh, casually going over what I've been playing and, and things like that. And that's the good thing about PS5's clip saving feature. Uh, for me at least, is that I can actually show you with some decent B-roll of all those trophies I've been getting. And um, we'll also do like more of a highly edited trophy video type challenge thing down the road. We always like doing those as well. But uh, it is 2021, so this coming Tuesday will probably be our PlayStation Predictions video, our annual PlayStation Predictions video. And uh, yeah, hopefully this year... <laughs> Hopefully this is a much better year. So yeah, 2020 was no good. Um, so let's go into the next year with our heads high and, uh, well, continue in our mutual interest of this fabulous industry and this hobby. Playing games are, are always an escape no matter what you're going through, and that was certainly the case for me for this year, and I'm sure that was the same thing for many of you as well. So we got a lot more of PlayStation and gaming in general to talk about here on this channel. So. That concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Panecki. Thank you all so much for talking with me, and I will see you all next Friday.